Tonight on News 30, same-sex marriage certification is now legal in Oklahoma. And Francis Ford Coppola is visiting Oklahoma City. Good evening, I'm Lindsay Skinner. And I'm Hannah Morris. For an additional five states, including Oklahoma, same-sex marriage is now legal. That now makes a total of 35 states that allow same-sex marriage. Supreme Court justices came to a surprising decision on Monday. The justices refused to rule on any cases involving same-sex marriage bans. Because they did not act, the rulings of previous courts are upheld. Besides, Oklahoma, Indiana, Utah, Virginia, and Wisconsin are also now issuing marriage license to same-sex couples. Pottawatomie County issued its first same-sex marriage license shortly after the Supreme Court announcement. Here's Jake Nelson with more on the car theft last week. Last week we reported about a car stolen in this parking lot, right south of Montgomery Hall at Oklahoma Baptist University. Well, that car was found in Ada, Oklahoma. Campus police would like to remind everyone to lock their doors and take all their valuables out of their car. And if you see anything suspicious, call campus police at 878-6000. I'm Jake Nelson reporting for News 30. A punishment has been set for Oklahoma lobbyist Chad Alexander. He will be on probation for five years, will pay a fine of $500 to a victim's fund, and will complete 40 hours of community service. Alexander was arrested two weeks ago after a traffic violation led to the discovery of cocaine in his vehicle. Alexander has been heavily involved in the support of Oklahomans for a conservative future, as well as several other Republican candidates, and was chairman of Oklahoma's Republican Party from 2001 to 2003. He was taken into custody with charges of possession of cocaine and possessions of CDS without a prescription. Alexander issued a public statement explaining the situation and apologizing for what he called a stress-induced fall into a chemical substance dependency. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and as we said last week, we will be doing stories on cancer awareness throughout the month of October. Here's Nicole Smith with the story of an event happening here in Shawnee during the month of October. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Here in the town of Shawnee at St. Anthony Hospital, there will be numerous events for breast cancer awareness. On October 9th and 23rd, there will be an event known as Pink Day for any women in the town of Shawnee who would like to come and get educated about breast cancer awareness. I spoke with the Director of Public Relations, Communications, and Marketing to find out just what they have planned. Painting with a Purpose is um, our theme this year for our 19th annual Think Pink event. And every year we do something different. This year we're doing a social painting class and women can come and create their own masterpiece. And then they can also learn some breast cancer information and have fun with their friends. So our speaker this year is our new OBGYN, Dr. Elise Slayball. And she will be talking about um, the latest information on breast cancer and talking about uh, mammograms and self breast exams and the shirts you see are going to be worn by employees during the month of October to show their support for breast cancer awareness so this year we will be providing 10 free mammograms to women who um, are patients at the volunteer health clinic of Pottawatomie County I'm Nicole Smith reporting for more information you can go to www.stanthony.com or visit their Facebook page Remember, the cost is $35 and re reservations are required. The increased fear of Ebola spreads as the first person diagnosed in the, United, in the United States has passed away. Native Liberian Thomas Eric Duncan died Wednesday morning. Another potential case appeared in Frisco, Texas. The Dallas deputy was a first responder to the unsanitized apartment of Duncan's. Today, he has been cleared as safe from Ebola despite having original signs and symptoms. 
Now a nurse in Spain is having increasingly worse conditions. Hospitals across the nation are preparing for any potential case so that the infection is contained. Even Shawnee St. Anthony's has voiced how they are prepared if any Ebola cases were to come forward in the local area. The enterovirus has received its first, first death of the D68 in the United States in New Jersey when young Eli Waller went to sleep and never woke up. Eli was one of nearly 600 confirmed cases in 43 states, and his death is the only one for fatalities that can be entirely blamed on the enterovirus. There are still no signs that the parents would have been able to pick up on, and his triplet sisters are not sick or showing any signs. The CDC is encouraging parents and schools to have children wash their hands frequently and sanitizing the things that they play with. Also, to keep your child home if they are sick and to keep your child away from those who are sick. After the break, Jordan Hunt looks at the progress of the Veterans Memorial here in Shawnee. Stay with us. Welcome back to News 30. It's been over a year since devastating tornadoes caused mass destruction in Moore, Oklahoma but many areas are still in need of urgent repair. There's hope for three damaged schools thanks to six-time NASCAR winner Jimmy Johnson and Lowe's Home Improvement Stores. The two partnered to provide funds for several more schools to rebuild their demolished gyms. The partnership celebrated the reopening of the gyms last week. Briarwood Elementary, Highland East, and Plaza Towers Elementary all had completed gyms by the time students started returning for classes. Lowe's has already donated $1 million in aid to the tornado-devastated areas. Chick-fil-A is expanding the meal experience with a new free phone app. The app allows users to upload funds to an account and easy pay by tapping a button and scanning a QR code at the register. A representative said only certain markets and stores currently have access to the mobile pay. The function should be available at the Chick-fil-A underway on Kickapoo Street since the technology is expected to go nationwide by the end of the year. Jordan Hunt had the opportunity to look at the developments of the Veterans Memorial in Shawnee by the Pottawatomie Courthouse. I'm here at the Oklahoma Veterans Memorial Park where I talked to Tom Smith, board member and park designer, about the plans that they have for the future. Well, the memorial started, the first design, was back in the early 2000s. And it took us about five years to get it through the city and, and get this property, this piece of ground, hallowed ground, given to us by the city. This is the outcome of what we've been able to gather up. The entire idea for the entire park is to honor Oklahoma State veterans, to commemorate the loss of our friends and, and fellow comrades who have served our country, given their lives. Everything in this park has not only military, but historical significance. The star is 50 feet, 50 states. Centerpiece, 13 inches, 13 original colonies. There's seven lights on the walkway, represent the seven weapons used at funeral ceremonies. In the last almost 10 years, the committee has made many developments, but they aren't done yet. It's ongoing. It's absolutely ongoing. We have spent a quarter, a little over a quarter of a million dollars here at this point. The next plan is a granite memorial with the names of Oklahoma veterans. So 8,120 plus veterans from the state of Oklahoma only. We are still trying to raise 150,000 to bring in the black granite panels and they'll be placed around the star. And if we can get the, get the $50,000 it takes to, to put a down payment on the panels, get them in here, then we're going to work on getting the no, enough money to get them etched. We have done something to honor those that have gone on ahead of us. This has been Jordan Hunt reporting to you from News 30. I don't know if you all have noticed, but Shawnee schools have partnered with different organizations within the community to make known the needs within their schools. Shawnee schools have reached into the community to develop a to develop a program known as Partners in Education. The Partners in Education program was developed this year through a partnership between Shawnee Public Schools, the Greater Shawnee Chamber of Commerce, and Big Brothers Big Sisters, aiming to make schools 
needs widely known to those in the area willing to assist. The Shawnee News Star did an interview with Mallory Cheatwood, community coordinator at Horace Mann Elementary School. She states, I would say our overall goal is just more communication with the community and just giving the community a little bit of insight about what is going on inside the school. This program is a way to get involved and be informed about future generations coming up through the Shawnee school system. It will be interesting to see how the Shawnee program progresses throughout years to come. The creator of The Godfather will be making an appearance in Oklahoma City this month. Francis Ford Coppola will be on stage at the Oklahoma City Community College annual signature series to discuss his career and the future of the film industry. Coppola's connection to OCCC is artist-in-residence Gary Fredrickson, a friend from the Godfather era in the, early seven, in the early 70s. The event will be on October 20th. Premium tickets are priced at $75. Lower orchestra is $45 and upper orchestra is $35. Tickets can be purchased by calling 405-682-7576 or visiting tickets or visiting tickets.occcc.edu. Hey Hannah, I got a joke for you. When do you go on red and stop on green? Well, I'm not sure, Lindsay. When you're eating a watermelon. So the real question is, is watermelon a fruit or a vegetable? That's what Nicole Smith asked around Oklahoma Baptist University's campus. Let's see what she found out. The state of Oklahoma is considering making watermelon the new state vegetable. Now, most of us has grown up thinking that watermelon was a fruit. So, we took it to the streets to see what you guys think about making it the new vegetable. Finally, I mean, thank the Lord. I mean, we have a great opportunity now to shed some light on um, the minority that is the watermelon. It Amen. has been pushed down and oppressed by Amen. other melons. I mean, is it even a vegetable? I mean... I don't know. If you want to make it a vegetable, make it a vegetable. I don't really care. I absolutely think that watermelon should be the new state vegetable. Um, you can eat every single part of it. In different countries, they fry up the rind. They serve it as a vegetable. Um, we love it here, especially in Oklahoma. Summers are hot. People love watermelon. Uh, it keeps you hydrated. It's healthy. Why not? I mean, I think Oklahoma overall has a very strong uh, ecosystem and a very strong government overall that I think uh, watermelon would just henceforth our... Uh, our rights and our privilege to become a uh, individual nation. I think it's a good idea. I like watermelon, so I'm down for it. I didn't know watermelon was a vegetable, to be honest. I thought it was a fruit. <laughs> Two shots. Nicole would be Nicole would like to thank everyone who participated in her poll. It's always fun when we can get our viewers involved in the story and hear what you have to say. Next, Tiami Cortez has the local weather. And Kylie Ann Parker updates us on local arts and entertainment. We'll be right back. I think everyone's wondering when cool fall weather will finally be here. Well, let's see if Tiami has an answer to that. I'm hoping so, Hannah and Lindsay. I think cooler temperatures will slowly be heading our way, at least this weekend. Last week we had an amazing weather with slight thunderstorms Monday night, but that's all over and you can look forward to a sunny weekend. The best weather to be outside is coming your way this Saturday and Sunday. Tomorrow we'll finish the week with a high of 80 and a low of 59, with a 60% chance of rain, with scattered thunderstorms, so keep an umbrella around for that. Then we're going to see a drastic change on Saturday with only 20% chance of rain, at a high of 70 and a low of 54 degrees. To finish the weekend, it will be mostly sunny with a high of 76 and a low of 59. We will be experiencing heavy showers at the start of next week. On Monday, there will be a high of 75 and a low of 57. And on Tuesday, we will have a high of 52 and a low of 56. Reaching the middle of next week, on Wednesday, there will be nothing but sunny, clear skies with a high of 80 and a low of 62 degrees. The pollen count is still very high and terrible for allergy sufferers. Hopefully, we'll see that number decrease for the start of the new week. But for now, stay cautious of allergies and don't forget the rainy days, so have an umbrella around. That's all for this week. 
Thank you for watching and stay tuned for next week's weather forecast. Here's Kylie Ann Parker with your arts and entertainment. Kylie Ann Parker here, your arts and entertainment anchor for News 30. There's many events going on in Shawnee this weekend, and two of those just happen to be plays. Beginning today, the St. Gregory's Theater Department welcomes you to the premiere of their version of The Glass Menagerie. This four-character memory play by Tennessee Williams tells the story of Tom, a young man struggling with family relationships during the Great Depression. His mother is obsessed with finding a suitor for her daughter, and his sister's shyness keeps her trapped within herself, and his father has abandoned them. The Glass Menagerie will run this Thursday and Friday at 8 p.m., and Saturday at 2 and 8 p.m. For more information or to purchase tickets, call 405-878-5179 or visit www.stgregories.edu. The Shawnee Little Theater presents On Golden Pond. The play will begin today and run through Saturday the 18th. On Golden Pond tells the story of Ethel and Norman Thayer, who return to their summer home on Golden Pond for the 48th year. Norman is an 80-year-old retired professor with memory loss, but is still eager for life, while Ethel is younger than Norman and delights in the small things of life. The couple is visited by their divorced, middle-aged daughter and her dentist fiancé, who then leave for Europe, leaving behind their teenage son for the summer. The boy quickly becomes the grandchild Ethel and Norman have always longed for. As Norman teaches the teenager about fishing and what books are good books to read, he learns lessons about modern teenagers in return. The play will begin tonight at 7.30 p.m. and again on Friday and Saturday. It will continue at 2 p.m. on Sunday and again at 7.30 p.m. on the 17th and 18th. Tickets are on sale at the Shawnee Little Theater box office as well as online at www.shawneelittletheater.com. The box office can be reached at 405-275-2805. The Judge, Alexander, and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, and Dracula Untold are just a few movies being released in theaters tomorrow. The Judge follows the story of a big city lawyer, Hank Palmer, played by Robert Downey Jr., who returns to his childhood home where his father, played by Robert Duvall, the town's judge, is suspected of murder. Hank sets out to discover the truth, and along the way, he reconnects with his family. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day is a family comedy about Alexander's day, which begins with gum stuck in his hair, followed by more calamities. Though he finds little sympathy from his family and begins to wonder if bad things only happen to him, his mom, dad, brother, and sister all find themselves living through their own terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day as well. The film is rated PG and stars Steve Carell and Jennifer Garner. And finally, being the month of October, we should expect the release of a few horror movies. And not to disappoint, Dracula Untold is to be released tomorrow. It's an action horror movie starring Luke Evans and Dominic Cooper. Facing threats to his kingdom and family, Lad it makes a dangerous deal with dangerous supernatural forces while trying to avoid succumbing to the darkness himself. So these are just a few movies being released this weekend. So if you have no plans, grab your family and come grab a bag of popcorn and some candy and enjoy one of these amazing films to be released. That's all for Arts and Entertainment this week. I'm Kylie Ann Parker reporting for News 30. Next, Abby Click has our sports update. We'll be right back. Let's hear from Abby Click about sports this week. Thanks, Hannah. Former Oklahoma Sooner Adrian Peterson appeared in court for the first time after being accused of child abuse Wednesday. A court date of December 1st has been set for this case. Under Texas law, if an individual is convicted of this felony, they could face up to two years in a state prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Peterson has also refrained from seeing his son until the conclusion of this case. Additionally, until the case clears up, Peterson is unable to take the field as a Minnesota Viking. The Vikings' regular season concludes on December 28th. The Oklahoma Sooners will take on the Texas Longhorns and the highly anticipated Red River Showdown this Saturday. This is the first game OU will face new head coach Charlie Strong for the Longhorns. Previously, OU captured nine wins out of the past 15 games under head coach Mack Brown. Bouncing back from the 36-20 loss last year, number 12 ranked OU will kick off at 11 a.m. Saturday. 
The OBU volleyball team will host the annual Dick Pink game tomorrow at 7 p.m. The Lady Bison will compete against Wayland Baptist. I spoke with senior volleyball player Valerie Stetzer to discuss the Dig Pink game. Um, our purpose is to raise awareness of breast cancer and breast cancer research. Um, we will be wearing our pink jerseys in support and we will also be wearing these t-shirts which um, all the volleyball girls are selling for ten dollars. And you can find one of us and we um, will sell them to you or you could also just go online um, and donate as well. But we just really want to um, raise as much awareness as possible. Um, last year we raised $1,500, which um, in the state of Oklahoma was the highest amount raised. And this year we, we plan on going higher than that and um, we're really focused and really trying our hardest to continue to raise as much money as possible. What are your hopes for? The Lady Bison volleyball team is wearing pink jerseys to show their support and encourages those attending the game to wear pink as well. The Shawnee Wolves clinched a close 22-21 win against Sky Took last week. Shawnee's Cole Humphrey made the winning play with an 11-yard touchdown catch with just 24 seconds left in the game. Shade Franklin, defensive back for Shawnee, was awarded the player of the week. Franklin ran for 142 yards and scored a touchdown for the Wolves. With a record of 4-1, the Wolves will host Tol Tulsa Kelly tomorrow starting at 7 p.m. That's all for sports. Make sure you head out to the Dick Pink game tomorrow at 7 p.m to support the Lady Bison volleyball team and their efforts for breast cancer research. Hannah and Lindsay, back to you. If you were up at 4 a.m. on Wednesday, you might have noticed the start of an unusual occurrence. A full lunar eclipse turned the moon dark red Wednesday morning. The eclipse, nicknamed the Blood Moon, lasted for only about four hours, setting at around 7.30 a.m. The Blood Moon occurs when the sun, earth, and moon align. The moon is covered in a shadow cast by the earth and scattered light from the earth's atmosphere darkens the moon's color into mm -hmm. a deep maroon. Lunar eclipses usually occur biannually. Well, that's it for News 30 this week. We'll be back on October 23rd because next week is fall break for the students here at News 30. But be sure to come back October 23rd at 630 for another newscast. Thank you for watching and have a great night.